Why do people with money buy European crossovers instead of Cadillacs? They are said to consume a lot of fuel, they have a large transport tax, and they don't really drive and turn even worse. Is all of this true? We will analyze the opinions of the owners and traditionally divide them into pros and cons. Origins and Technique The first manufacturer to successfully launch a large luxury SUV on the market was Lexus with its LX back in 1995. Two of his sworn competitors, Concerns Ford and General Motors, shot almost a doublet. Ford rolled out the Lincoln Navigator, built on the basis of the Expedition full-size SUV. GM's answer was the first-generation Cadillac Escalade. True, the rush forced the designers to go the very easy way. In fact, the novelty was the result of badge engineering. They just took a full-size SUV GMC Yukon Denali and changed the nameplates on it. This was clearly not enough, and the first Escalade remained on the assembly line for only two years. That is how long it took to develop the second generation of the model, which became the first real Escalade. The car, built on the GMT 800 frame platform, remained on the assembly line from January 2001 to 2006. The car was assembled at three plants, in the city of Arlington, Texas, in the Mexican Salao, and in Russian Kaliningrad at the Aftoder plant. For all the luxury of equipment, the Escalade remained a classic American full-size SUV with powerful V8 engines from the Vortec family and a reduction gear in the transfer case, although rear-wheel drive versions were also offered. In 2007, it was time for an update. GM switched to the new GMT 900 Universal Frame platform, which became the basis for a whole bunch of models under the brand Chevrolet, GMC, and, of course, Cadillac. It is the third generation Cadillac Escalade that will become the hero of our today's story. The car received a practically uncontested petrol 6.2 liter Vortec V8 6200 with a capacity of 409 horsepower, a new 6 speed hydromechanical gearbox 6L80, a magnetic ride shock absorber stiffness control system, as well as a body with a significantly improved, compared to the previous generation, aerodynamics and two length options standard and extended ESV. But the transfer case lost its downshift but at the same time it could provide a smooth transfer of torque between the axles from a 50-50 ratio to full transfer of force to the rear axle. However, there were also purely rear-wheel drive versions. It is also worth noting that there was also a hybrid version in the line, but in Russia it is practically not found. The car was equipped with three rows of seats, and the second row could be either in the form of a triple sofa or two separate captain's chairs, three-zone climate control, a media system with a six-disc changer and electric drives of everything that can be equipped with them, including automatically retractable footrests. The assembly was also carried out at three plants, in Arlington, Salao, and Kaliningrad. During its life cycle, the model received only one significant update since 2010, cars began to be equipped with the AFM, Active Fuel Management, system, which turns off half of the working cylinders when possible and at low load, as well as a USB input that allows you to control the media system via iPhone. In 2015, there was a generational change. By this time, GM began to curtail its activities in Russia, the assembly of the Escalade model was transferred to Belarus, but the Cadillac brand remained on the market, represented exclusively by crossovers and SUVs. Well, the Esky of the third generation moved to the secondary market, where they can be bought at prices ranging from 850,000 rubles, and sometimes even cheaper, to 1,800,000 to 2 million rubles. All this means that within the same budget, you can get a Hyundai Creta or this huge premium car. But is it worth doing this? About what technical problems a person who decides to buy a Cadillac Escalade 3 may face, we told a year ago. Well, now let's see what benefits it will get and what the owners of such cars think about all this, many of which, by the way, have already bought them on the secondary market. Hate number five, cost of ownership, consumption, parts price, tax. So, suppose that a person has firmly decided to purchase a large premium SUV for same money. Well, in this case, God himself told him to look towards American models, and the Escalade will definitely be far from the worst choice. 
In many reviews, the owners claim that today there are not so many competitors in the market for used cars of the same age in terms of price slash quality ratio. And there are enough offers that fit into the available budget. But finding the right car is not easy at all. The fact is that the Cadillac Escalade, according to its owners, the car as a whole is strong, hardy, survivable, and not brittle. On the one hand, he forgives a lot and suffers a lack of attention for quite a long time. On the other hand, many former owners bought it because of its brutal appearance and status, rode it, played enough, realized that it was not mine and put it up for sale, leaving the solution of the accumulated technical problems to the new owners. So everyone in unison strongly recommends that you definitely drive a potential purchase for diagnostics to a car service and not to any, but to the one in which they know this car. In one of the reviews, its author writes that before buying, he looked at at least a dozen options and spent more than 30,000 rubles on diagnostics alone. But a suitable option has been found. One way or another, you will have to invest in it, and these investments will definitely exceed the equivalent of 1,000 evergreens, which is usual for such cases. On the internet, the owners write that they spent from 150,000 to 350,000 rubles on bringing used Escalade to life. Finally, the car is completely ready for operation. Will a person with an average income pull it, well, let's say, 60 to 70,000 a month? This is a big question. In principle, Escalade maintenance is not too expensive and, as a rule, costs 10 to 15,000 rubles. But according to the regulations, it is necessary to pass it through 7 to 8,000 kilometers, and if a person travels a lot, then one MOT per year will not work. Under the hood of the Escalade is a V8 with a capacity of 409 horsepower, which means that in the regions of central Russia the transport tax will be 61,350. But that's not all. As many as 6.2 liters of working volume and a herd of 409 wild American horses need to be fed, and their appetite is excellent. It's no coincidence that fuel economy is a favorite topic of discussion in any Escalade owner community. Some foam at the mouth prove that fuel consumption is 30 to 35 liters in Moscow and 20 to 25 outside the city, depending on the driving style, and it doesn't matter if you drive at a speed of 40 or 140 kilometers per hour. And the mythical 21 liters per hundred in the city can be obtained, except perhaps by riding along the Moscow Ring Road, and even then on a day off and in the summer. Others no less violently oppose, they say, if your consumption is approaching 30 liters, then there are two options, either do not tear from each traffic light with a pedal in the floor and with smoke from under the wheels, and there is such a temptation, whatever you say, or go to the service and thoughtfully look for the cause. Such an estimate given in one of the reviews looks quite sane, the highway, up to 100 kilometers slash h, 11 l slash 100 kilometers, the highway, 100 to 130 kilometers slash h, 12 to 13 L slash 100 kilometers, the city, without traffic jams, a little with a highway, 16 to 17 L slash 100 kilometers, city, with moderate traffic jams, a little with a highway, from 16.5 to 18.5 L slash 100 kilometers, city, with traffic jams and no highway at all, 18 to 20 L slash 100 kilometers, combined average consumption about 17 to 18 L slash 100 kilometers. H. And now we take our average runs for the year, multiply by the average consumption, the resulting amount by the price of the 90-second gasoline. By the way, in many reviews, the authors note that the consumption when using the 95th is somewhat lower, and we get the total amount, to which we add the planned costs for maintenance and tax. We will add a certain amount for possible unscheduled repairs. As follows from the vast majority of reviews, with proper care, Escalade is not inclined to turn into a black financial hole. So, in several reviews, the authors note that their second premium German cars of about the same age and also with powerful engines required twice as much investment in a year than the Escalade in three years, but nevertheless it's still worth laying some expenses. Most likely, you will get a figure of the order of 250 to 350,000 rubles, and your salary, let me remind you, is 60 to 70,000. 
and now decide for yourself whether it is worth buying the Escalade for the last million dollars and whether you are ready to spend several monthly salaries on car maintenance. But if the tax does not scare you, just think, don't go to a restaurant with a company a couple of times, your earnings allow you to feed 18 to 20 liters for every 100 kilometers, burn 300 liters of gasoline every month, and it is possible to spend about 100,000 rubles a year to keep the car in decent condition, then the Escalade can bring you a lot of joy. Love number 5, Emotionality Escalade, without a doubt, is one of the cars that are bought on emotions. This is a rather strange and ambiguous car, but it addictive and attracts, you either love it or categorically do not accept it. This choice is most often made not by the head, but exclusively by the heart. Firstly, appearance. Yes, not everyone likes the image of a glamorous tank, but... Ah, this head optics is the size of a couple of home chandeliers. And that huge chrome grille. And shiny 22 wheels. And the interior, this American beige interior with a bunch of electric drives, wood and high quality leather. And the sound, the exhaust sound of a real American V8, deep, low, powerful, like the growl of a mountain lion in the rocks of the Sierra Nevada, a sound that gives goosebumps and hair stand on end. The authors of many reviews on the internet begin with this, by describing their emotions, it's nice to approach the car, the appearance is pleasing to the eye, it's nice to start it, both remotely and with a key, it's nice to be inside, although here, of course, an important role platinum equipment plays. And this is after several years of ownership, comma damn it, but the Americans know a lot about style. Rollers the size of Dewu made eyes organically fit into the huge wheel arches, where the budget of a small city can fit, and the steps, which, as if by magic, descend to the master's feet every time you open the door, complete the look of the car and its pathos, I love the sounds it makes when it starts, when it accelerates. I am not one of those who like to put on a snarl, from which passers-by lay their ears, and in twenty minutes my head begins to crack. But here regular exhaust, in my opinion, is done as it should. It mumbles pleasantly at idle and low revs and rumbles in a bass voice if the revs are above 2.5 thousand, and this is a lot, in the city with a quiet ride it is enough to turn this engine up to 2,000. This is a car with charisma and character. She is chosen not by reason, but by heart and soul. It was a conscious choice, and every time I sit behind the wheel of this monster, a smile does not leave my face. After all, you sit at the helm, as in an expensive yacht, lounging and putting one hand on the armrest, a full-fledged armrest, not its surrogate, and the other on the console between the seats, in a salon the size of a three-room apartment in a Khrushchev, and at ease, without efforts to direct your icebreaker in the right direction. This car is always visible in the stream and attracts the eye. Some write that sometimes it even bothers. Someone noted that after the release of Morgan Stern's new song about Cadillac, young people are completely blown away, and they start dancing at the sight of the car. To be honest, sometimes I would like to avoid attention to myself, but it doesn't work out. Relations with other participants in the movement also develop in different ways. In some reviews, the authors talk about universal respect and even some apprehension, dimensions and appearance make the car non-conflict on the road. No one cuts, it doesn't fit into the rear bumper, it doesn't blink its headlights, even thieves numbers and strange cars with flashing lights, it's checked. A kind of empty space is created around the car, and you alone decide how to drive. On the Escalade, you turn on the turn signal and they let you through. On the highway, you catch up with a car in the left lane, and they give way to you. Blunted at a traffic light, and everyone is silent until you yourself notice. On other cars, you have to climb, fight, blink the light, and if you didn't start moving at the traffic light a millisecond after the green light turned on, they will blow you how to drink. Others acknowledge that attitudes vary greatly and are very similar to any premium car. You can face both the politeness and compliance of the owners of other luxury cars and the principled hatred of the owners of more budget brands. Drive slowly and politely, even in traffic jams, this is the happiness of owning this car. I can say for sure that the Escalade will undoubtedly cause some caution, respect and recognition from the attendants who see what you drove to this or that institution. Finally, 
as in the case of other controversial and charismatic models, Escalade owners have formed a close-knit online community. There are forums and chats in WhatsApp where they will always tell, prompt and direct, and you can just have a nice chat. There are club services that employ real high-class experts who know all the sores and problems of these cars and are ready to solve them without multiplying the price tag by three, and this circumstance can definitely be attributed to significant pluses. Hate number four, chrome parts, paintwork, VIN, door handles. In principle, the Escalade body is sufficiently resistant to corrosion, and you will never see signs of corrosion or peeling of the varnish on the factory parts of the body with native paintwork. Well, the frame is the frame. Its metal, of course, also corrodes, but in order for decay to lead to a violation of mechanical strength, it takes not 5 to 10 years, but somewhat more. But there are a number of unpleasant moments. Firstly, Corrosion of the metal in the area of the frame where the VIN is applied can make it unreadable, which in turn leads to inevitable and very serious problems when registering a car. So it is necessary to carefully inspect the condition of the number that is stamped on the frame on the right side, and the area of backslash U200B backslash U200B front passenger door, and after purchase, if you are not going to own a car until it falls apart into dust, it is advisable to remove all the old mastic, clean the room, and then cover this place with a layer of lithol. The Japanese have a ceremony of admiring the cherry blossoms. But the owners of Escalade have a sad tradition of admiring the flowering of chrome parts in the spring. This is a real sore, which is mentioned in one way or another by the authors of almost all reviews, in large cities with salt and reagents in winter, in a couple of seasons, chrome completely loses its marketable appearance, and then begins to peel off altogether, giving a very beautiful car a terrible look. And there's nothing to be done about it. Yes, you can wash more often, and this may slightly delay the death, but not much. And then either change the parts to new ones that cost like an airplane wing, or paint, from which the car drastically loses its appearance. The windshield wiper mechanism also suffers from corrosion, so the complaint the trapezoids of the wipers turn sour, I went to the service two times a year, can be considered quite typical. Another problem is related to the quality of the paintwork and the sad fact that initially the car was not equipped with mudguards. As a result, dirt with small pebbles constantly flies from under the front wheels, and the result of such sandblasting is the lower part of the doors, covered with multiple chips. It is treated by installing regular mudguards, but this pleasure is not cheap about 10,000 rubles per set. In general, the owners evaluate the paintwork as quite gentle. I drove through the forest once and the varnish was already scratched, although after the winter I painted five or six elements, almost the perimeter of the car. Two months after the purchase, the varnish on the rear wing peeled off. I had to paint for your account, almost from the first day, the paint began to fly around from the side mirrors. The authors of reviews and the appearance of chips on the hood consider a chronic and protracted illness. This, as they say, does not affect the speed, but it is terribly annoying. Well, an unexpected problem turned out to be related to the mechanical strength of the door handles. The next day after passing the MOT, I tried to open the car and was extremely surprised to find the handle in my hands, outwardly without the use of violence. According to the dealer, this is a disease in the Escalades, weak exterior door handles. The door froze, pulled a little harder, and voila. The handle came off, weak door handles, two have already been pulled out. The author of one of the reviews said that the handle was torn off by a five-year-old child. The owners also complain about problems with keeping the car clean. They wash the car at the car wash, blow it out, but it still flows for about an hour from all the cracks, moldings, spoilers, and linings. In winter, there are even more problems. The button to open the glass on the tailgate freezes, the side windows freeze tightly, no matter how you blow and dry them at the sink before leaving. In general, it is very difficult to keep clean. Love number four, agility. When looking at the monumental faceted carcass of the Cadillac Escalade, one might get the impression that the operation of this car in the city will be a complete torment and the dimensions will be a real disaster. However, the owners of the car assure that this is not at all the case. Of course, the element of Escalade is the track, 
but even in Moscow traffic jams, I would not call it a clumsy behemoth. Super comfort, the pleasure of moving from point A to point B. No stress. For the city, the car, of course, looks big, but there were no particular problems when parking or driving in narrow yards. Despite its overall dimensions, the Cadillac Escalade is very easy and convenient to drive even in narrow Moscow streets and tight parking lots. Escalade has excellent maneuverability and an excellent turning radius. It allows you to turn around literally on the spot, and huge side mirror mugs and a rear-view camera solve the problem of parking in cramped places. I have no problems with parking in Moscow, both in the center and outside the city. I drive it like a passenger car. For 1.5 years, I completely got used to the dimensions and squeeze and wherever the Oka gets up. Thanks to the burdock mirrors, even a blonde will be able to park and maneuver in a car. Rear parking sensors and a rear view camera solve the problem of parking dimensions. Hate number three, ergonomic weirdness. Why do people buy such a car? Of course, for the sake of excellent comfort in the cabin, and in general, Escalade does not deceive their expectations. You just need to remember that this comfort is purely American, and overseas ideas about what is good and what is bad can seriously differ from European and Asian ones. Let's start with the ergonomics of the driver's seat. Many note a paradoxical situation, sitting in a chair is very comfortable, but in turns you literally fly from side to side due to the almost complete absence of lateral support. The mutual arrangement of the seat, steering wheel and pedal assembly can be adjusted so that everything is comfortable for a driver of any height. The only thing is that the servo that moves the steering column works too fast, so it's quite difficult to catch the desired position. This is some kind of attraction, because the speed of movement is just reactive, it would be better if the box switched so quickly. For some reason, the car completely lacks a platform for resting the left leg. Solve this problem in different ways. Someone even suggests screwing a plastic brake shoe with a self-tapping screw. A lot of reviewers complain about the steering wheel being too thin and solve this problem with a braid. The owners get used to the automatic transmission selected traditional for American cars in the form of a poker on the steering column quickly, and some even come to the conclusion that such a selector is much more convenient than the usual lever on the transmission tunnel, but it takes much longer to get used to the single steering column overloaded with functions, and it's impossible to figure out what and how to turn it on without reading the instructions. The absence of an anti-pinch function and the semi-automatic mode of operation of the front power windows are puzzling. The glass is lowered with one click, but to raise it, you need to hold the button down. Well, or such an ergonomic puncture. You may have come across a situation, you missed a Cadillac Escalade merging into the stream, and its driver did not blink your emergency lights. Just do not blame him for a lack of politeness and consider him an ungrateful beast, just the emergency button is located on the top of the steering column, and pressing it while taxiing is almost impossible, if not dangerous. There are questions about the distribution of internal volumes. The author of one of the reviews describes this situation as follows, and asks they tried to make a full-fledged third row, moving the second one forward. Why? I drove a child in the third row once a year, and someone always rides in the second row. In the same LX, the third was made as a last resort, there is a full-fledged second, on which four could easily be put, and the car became eight-seater. And Esco with large external dimensions, a six-seater. Paradox. I felt this, however, only once, when, having gone to the dacha with the usual train with friends, me, wife, two children, and friends, husband and wife, I had to ask my friends to go in their car, since one rear seat in the third row was occupied with a stroller and luggage. By the way, with the third row unfolded, you can put only an umbrella or a bat in the trunk who needs what more. A lot of complaints about the quality of interior materials, first of all, to plastic. The platinum interior differs very favorably from the standard one. I think all owners will agree with this. Finishing dashboard, seats and doors, five points, no questions asked. Good stitching, materials, performance, everything is fine, although the lower part of the dashboard could also be covered with vinyl, such as the bottom of the doors, but alas. But with the finishing of everything else in the cabin, everything is sad. 
The racks in the ceiling are covered with a dumb beige rag on foam rubber, on which there are puffs, like on women's tights, if something is carelessly caught on the sink or children are touched. Together with the missing cabin filter and dust and soot flying into the cabin, this is generally a disaster. On the visors, in general, everything exfoliates and wrinkles. The fitting of the pillars and the ceiling is disgusting, there are gaps everywhere. The speakers in the A-pillars are also slotted. Threshold trim is a nightmare. Made in the form of a flat plastic lining, which is all crooked and miserable. The armrest between the front seats dangles and creaks. When buying on this topic, the dealer said as provided by the manufacturer. I also say this to everyone now, so as not to laugh. Indeed, the light beige interior looks exceptionally impressive, but practicality is a complete disaster. I did the beige interior, the car is working, I drive a lot of things, including staff. It's just that cleaning at the car wash can't cope anymore, I'll rush to the dry cleaner soon. Annoyance during operation is a bright interior. How busy I am. Moreover, the seats, other sidewalls, everything is fine. Sometimes it is enough to wipe with napkins and be neat. But gender is everything. I have a small child, and, of course, he is not going to take off his shoes when he gets into the car. Despite the rubber carpets, the floor is still very easily soiled. Well, the absence of a cabin filter, if there is a place provided for its installation, Russian owners perceive it as some form of bullying. There are also a number of minor complaints, for example, the absence of places for water bottles in the doors is often mentioned, that the presence of a hatch is contraindicated for tall people, because it eats up 3 centimeters of the height of the cabin, and it is not possible to comfortably fit in the workplace with any adjustments. Owners of cars manufactured before 2011 can only dream of a USB input, Bluetooth, and a hands-free system, and everyone is unanimously perplexed why the onboard computer gives out information only in English, although the car was assembled in Russian Kaliningrad. Love number three, interior equipment and comfort. Of course, there are enough complaints about the interior of the Escalade on the internet. But American Comfort is an absolutely objective phenomenon, and Cadillac is exactly the brand that can embody it almost in full. And people appreciate it. Here are just some of the statements of the owners of Esky. When you get into this car, you feel why it costs so much, it's comfortable in it, it has excellent finishes, many functions that help the driver, I don't see the point in describing each of them, otherwise the review will look like a book. Separately, I would like to say about those who like to talk about damn gear shifting poker, no matter what you say, I still don't understand why all manufacturers don't do it this way, it's incredibly convenient. There is a heated seat. There is a separate heated back. There is seat ventilation. There is a heated steering wheel, in short, there is a capetz, how many there are. I like the salon very much. It's rich, somewhere they write about the cheapness of plastic, I didn't see it. For me, it's so harmonious. The seats are comfortable, except that the steering wheel is a bit thin. Behind the sofa is heated, folded both manually and electrically. The third row is quite spacious. The music sounds right. The trunk lid opens and closes automatically from the key fob. You can also open the glass separately from the key fob. I like the heating and cooling function of the cup holders between the seats, I did not experience cooling, but the heating of the coffee can was effective. A heated steering wheel is also a necessary option, especially for our climate zone. Remote engine start eliminates the need to install an alarm. Traveling steps a separate respect for the manufacturers, very convenient. Inside, the feeling that you are sitting in an expensive exclusive car does not leave you, the instrument panel, clock, wooden insert, a niche for cup holders that open with a pleasant clatter, an ashtray and a glove box between the front seats everything is conducive to a pleasant and comfortable ride. The only dissonance, in my opinion, is the climate and audio unit it looks rustic. But these are small things. In principle, in many reviews Escalade is associated with a luxury yacht, the car looks like it in motion, and the combination of wood, aluminum, and leather upholstery evokes some of the same images. Many good words have been written about the convenience for the driver. 
It all starts with ease of access. Pay attention to how the driver's door opens. This is the gate. Big men will understand me. We have already mentioned an extremely comfortable fit and a huge range of adjustments. We will only add that the pedal assembly, adjustable for reach, plays a significant role in this. Well, retractable steps help passengers a lot, especially children and the elderly. In almost all reviews, at least a couple of lines of praise are dedicated to the Bose audio system. Excellent sound quality combined with good sound insulation makes it possible to enjoy listening to music even for a very picky music lover. Noise isolation in the car is really on the level. In the reviews, the owners write that when you close the windows and doors, all external noises literally turn off. Since 2010, the system allows you to connect any smartphone, Android devices are connected via the AUX connector, and control is possible only from the phone screen, while the iPhone is connected via USB, and everything is controlled from the touch screen of the head unit. Bluetooth connection, of course, is not enough, but it is quite possible to get used to a wired connection. Family people are very pleased with the fact that on a long journey it is quite possible to listen to the radio, while second row passengers enjoy watching movies on a regular overhead monitor or listen to something of their own through regular wireless headphones. A lot of Escalade owners initially wanted a car with three rows of seats. Here writes the owner of a network of small eateries and restaurants. Sometimes you have to quickly transport staff to another restaurant, whether it's a banquet cooks, waiters, brewers, or an audit of the accounting department. Well, grab a couple of bags of malt or utensils. In a word, you need a big car, whatever one may say. Approximately the same considerations come from people with large families. I wanted to buy a car for the whole family. I have four children, so that the whole family can go on vacation. We live in the far north, so traveling to relatives in Anapa is far and long and, accordingly, the priority is safety and size. And here, oddly enough, they don't really like the six-seater version with two separate captain's chairs in the second row. Sometimes you have to load the whole family into the car, and since the second row of seats consists of two captain's chairs, there are clearly not enough seats. But it turned out that the third row of seats is pressed close to the second row, and my hockey bag easily enters. There is, however, a minus, the third row seats do not fold unless the head restraints are removed, and there are no niches where one could put them. But in general, no one is trying to question the highest level of comfort that the captain's chairs provide for two passengers in the second row, especially since they have the ability to control their own microclimate. People really like how the cabin transformation control and access to the luggage compartment are organized. You won't surprise anyone with electric adjustments of everything and everything, but I liked how from the captain's chair you can open slash close the luggage compartment door of this train by pressing the button on the overhead console and fold down the second row of seats. The only pity is that it will not work out. At the same time, the tailgate electric drive works both from the key fob and from the car itself. The button is located next to the sunroof control keys and folding the second row of seats. The power tailgate means that in any weather, the hands will remain clean, and it is not necessary to fully open and close the trunk. You have the option of opening only the glass in the tailgate from the key fob. And it's also convenient that during stops, not only the driver, but the front passenger can open or close the doors. As for the trunk itself, if the third row of seats is folded down, then four sets of hunting equipment can be freely placed in the cargo compartment, and there is still space left, and with the second row folded down, a full-fledged sleeping place for two people is obtained in the cabin. Hate number two, suspension and electrical problems. Each car has characteristic sores, and the Escalade is no exception. They mainly concern the suspension and various problems associated with electrics and electronics. Let's start with the suspension. For example, the rear air struts. For some, they go for 200,000, and for someone, Numa begins to poison thousands after 20, and it's not very clear how this correlates with driving style and service. And one dead shock absorber drags the second, and behind it the compressor. A failed compressor chews up the shock absorber cushions, and the cost of repairing everything turns out to be not very pleasant. 
The Escalade's front suspension has magnetic ride control, and owners say it's great stuff overall. The system itself analyzes the quality of the road surface, clamps the suspension on a flat surface, and loosens it on a bumpy one. But the American designers did not really foresee that there could be hatches on the smooth and even TTK or the garden ring, and right in the middle of the lane, or that you could run into a hole in the asphalt on the highway after several tens of kilometers of quite decent asphalt. And in such situations, a clamped suspension gives you a strong kick. And the magnetic ride control system really does not like severe frosts, which can greatly shorten the life of shock absorbers. The problem is solved by replacing several methods. Someone simply changes to new original ones, installs front shock absorbers from Tahoe, you just need to take measures to deceive the onboard computer, someone prefers to install Bilstein 5100. The latest methods also provide decent savings, from serious expenses front shock absorbers, they do not withstand our winters. The first set was changed for 30,000 kilometers, the second set for 58,000 kilometers. Initially, I took the original for 47,500, 2 PCS, saved money a second time, delivered from Teho for 25,000. By the way, the rear air struts are mainly responsible for body alignment under heavy load, so many people prefer to change all the standard shock absorbers to Bilstein in a circle. It is also much more economically profitable. I decided to try to abandon the rear air struts in favor of the Bilsteins around. They promised that the car would behave more restrained on the road and excessive rolliness would disappear. I figured that the original would cost me 75,000 rubles and the Bilsteins in a circle 35,000 with work, plugs for air springs and tricks. I thought if I don't like it, I'll put the original. And never regret it. Everything was as they said. The car has become much more pleasant to drive. Hub bearings rarely last 100,000 kilometers and are replaced as an assembly with the hub and ABS sensor. Price from 600 rubles. China, up to 25,000, original. Naturally, silent blocks, ball bearings, anti-roll bar struts regularly fail on such a heavy car. In general, the collective mind of Escalade owners came to the conclusion that the suspension is very weak and its resource is a maximum of 50 to 60,000 kilometers. At the same time, it is simply useless to change one lever or ball joint. They say, you will not get out of the service until you change all the levers and shock absorbers. The second group of complaints refers to the failure of a wide variety of electrics. Most often, owners complain about the headlight bulbs that burn out. Two or three times a year you have to change the low beam bulbs, they are by. Thankfully not Xenon. And this is a disease of all Escalades, not just my car. The fact is that when the engine is started, the voltage jumps strongly and the bulbs fly. And switch the light to off. Forget before starting. In general, only one in five with both burning headlights goes. A light bulb alone costs from 300 to 1500 rubles, and their durability does not depend on the price in any way. I tried everything in this price category. I already wanted to put 5000 apiece, but the master said that I would still come to them in half a year. But do not replace yourself. I'm too lazy to take off the bumper, it's easier to give 2000 to the service for a replacement. Often, owners notice that the light flickers slightly at idle. This fools the diode bridge. Alas, they do not sell it separately, only together with a generator. A new generator is offered from 9,000 rubles for the Chinese equivalent to 25,000 for the original. Another sore is falling off contacts for heating the rear window. And here you need to look for servicemen with hands who can simply solder the wire, otherwise you will have to change the glass to a new one, and the original costs 30,000. A very common problem is the failure of the retractable footrest motors, winter, reagents, and dirt. Here are three disgusting components that ruin the Escalade's electric running boards. You can add another lack of service, reed cleaning, lubricating, and maintaining the steps and electric motors. All these evil things may well lead you to the fact that the electric footboard gets tired and does not want to move into place. You can determine this by the hum that she makes when the car starts moving, trying to hide in her fighting place. 
I have with three to four times she succeeded. If you don't like the look when you are trying to close the car from the outside and the footboard is not in place, you can and should help it with your foot or another object at the time of lifting, so to speak, squeeze, but without swinging, otherwise marks will remain on the footboard. I thought about the replacement price. The villains in the official service drew almost 45 to 50,000 for one motor. In another place they said 25,000. The specialized forum limited it to 10,000 for one electric motor. Everything else is iron, and there is basically nothing to break there. Many owners are annoyed by the incomprehensible algorithm of the rain sensor. It happens that the glass is already all in the water, and the wipers are silent. You have to turn it on manually, and sometimes, on the contrary, on a sunny day you forget to set it to zero and start rubbing the glass. They obviously overdid it. And very often, the failure of one or another end device, an error on airbags was displayed, there is no temperature reading overboard, the check engine caught fire, the turn signal stopped working, turns out to be imaginary, the sensor itself, whether it be an airbag sensor or a parking sensor, is completely intact, and here his contacts were ruined by corrosion. At the service, the first thing they offer is the replacement of sensors, and this is 10 to 30,000 rubles, while a handy electrician with a head will completely solve the problem for 500 rubles. Love number two, handling, cross-country ability, reliability, safety. Many people initially expect that on the road the Escalade will be a typical American Humpty Dumpty, a sofa on soft pillows, rolls, with a light but completely empty steering wheel and no handling. To their surprise, the reality turns out to be completely different, more precisely, only the expectation of a light and empty steering wheel is justified. Many people call the suspension too stiff, rigid suspension. Does not break through, but does not swallow bumps. Where the wife's Tiguan swallows bumps and pits quite comfortably, Eska is shaking with might and main. Perhaps the 20th discs are to blame. Indeed, the owners of versions on 18 discs note that they provide significantly greater smoothness and ride comfort, very stiff suspension on the R22. Normal masters say that this car is designed only for 18 wheels, but the Americans, as usual, without bothering, step 22 wheels to improve sales while not changing the suspension. But the handling of the car is unexpectedly on top. Here again, in order not to be unfounded, you need to let the owners speak. What impressed me was the handling, especially in winter. All systems work great. After the LXA, which is like a cow on ice, the ESCA handles just fine. The handling of such a considerable machine is simply excellent. Turns, rearrangements, maneuvers on the track at a speed of 120 plus, the suspension works out just fine, the car goes like sticking to the road. Rolls are small. Apparently, wheels on 22 discs and a rubber profile of 45 have a considerable merit here. At first, the complete absence of zero on the steering wheel and the effort that does not change at any speed are annoying, but, having got used to it, you already begin to experience discomfort in cars where all this is. The suspension is quite comfortable, but you can't call this suspension soft. It will seem soft to BMW fans, but after Cruzac it is downright sport. I went to Twops. If anyone does not know, a significant part of the road passes through mountain passes, some turns almost 180 degrees. There, for the sake of interest, I followed the range sport with a supercharger engine and 20 rollers, which famously stitched turns. Surprisingly, Caddy did not lag behind even a centimeter, although much larger and heavier. Some sharp bends we swept at a speed of 70 to 80 kilometers slash h, which is very good for off-road vehicles. The sensor tenaciously holds the road, there are no hints of the demolition of the stern. The only serious drawback is that you have to constantly cling to the steering wheel because your ass shakes back and forth on the seat. In short, I was surprised and satisfied with the behavior of the car on mountain serpentines. Stories about the fact that the car goes smoothly along the highway, like an iron, like a steam locomotive on rails, can be found in almost every review. It maneuvers perfectly, it is easily rebuilt from lane to lane, it does not sway or roll. Of course, you can't turn the steering wheel 90 degrees, 160 degrees, but Porsche can't do that either. 
Pred 120, 140, 160, no problem. Rebuilds 140 to 160 better than the Lexus. In general, I began to catch myself thinking that I drive a Cadilla like a sports sedan, riding it looks very much like a sports one, because the suspension is quite stiff, and every small bump is felt inside the cabin. It rolls into corners just as well as a C-Class sedan, while body roll is minimal, and at some point the thought of impunity visits. As for the cross-country ability, it is more than enough to overcome the notorious last kilometer to the cottage or make a way to it through freshly fallen deep snow, since the traction on the bottoms of the Vortec V8 engine is truly locomotive, or park in a snowdrift, or vice versa get out of a parking lot covered with night snow. Well, the Escalade is still not intended for a serious off-road, the front bumper skirt hangs too low, the weight is too large, and there is no downshift in the transmission. So those who, despite the frame structure, call the car a crossover, in fact, are absolutely right. But the presence of a frame gives the owners special confidence in terms of safety, having traveled a lot on our routes and having seen enough of crazy drivers flying head-on, I realized that a big car still gives at least some kind of safety. I saw several accidents where large cars and hatchback sedans converged in a head-on collision. As a rule, in frame cars, only fractures, bruises, sometimes drivers got off with a fright. In smaller cars, things are usually much sadder. I saw several times how sprats were sawn out of mangled cars. And I have four children who are waiting for their dad. Here is another story. The story of a friend's accident in a Cadillac in an old body contributed to the purchase decision. It must be said that his Cadillac was not subject to restoration, although he learned about an attempt to sell it in a year to a trade-in of one of Peter's dealers, but he came out of the accident with one small bruise. Despite the fact that the eccentric, who unexpectedly made a U-turn through a continuous strip, was torn off the engine compartment, and he himself received a severe concussion. And in general, the Escalade is a strong car, there was a case, a moron flew out on a VAZ-2107, and I slowly drove into his wing. Front fender for replacement, headlight for replacement, driver's door for repair. This is all he has. I have scratched the varnish on the front bumper. But the owners consider the main advantage of the Cadillac Escalade to be its reliability. The car has jams and sores, but, in my experience and in communication with other owners, no one ever doubts that it will take you to your destination, even if it is several thousand kilometers away. The Vortex 6200 engine is absolutely reliable. Maybe this is not a millionaire, but it is quite possible to count on 400 to 500,000 of trouble-free mileage, and in general, the car's resource is much higher than that of many other models. True. People who think that if they change the oil every 15,000 times, do not regularly flush the injector, change the candles, clean the throttle, and will vomit on this car every time from a traffic light, then their engine will live forever, all are still diluted. The gearbox and transfer case are as reliable as the engine, the only thing to do with them is to change the oil every 40,000. So the owner's right in the end, I state, I haven't had a more reliable car yet. Of the breakdowns, there was only a hub replacement, 16,000 rubles plus work, an oil change, and a light bulb. At the same time, I drove almost 100,000 kilometers in a year. Hate number one, gearbox and brake work. Perhaps the most serious complaints from the owners are addressed to the brake system and gearbox. Let's start with the box. Claims relate to the unreliability of this unit, with proper maintenance, oil change after 40 to 60,000 kilometers, and proper use, do not tear from the start at every traffic light with smoke from under the wheels, and do not pull trucks out of the ditches, there will be no problems with the box. This is a very reliable unit, just like the entire permanent all-wheel drive system. By the way, the transmission is designed to tow a trailer weighing up to 5 tons, for which there is a special button on the end of the poker. But the very algorithm of its work clearly does not suit very many. The automatic transmission is set up for pensioners. It prevents the engine from running normally by shifting at too low a speed, and if it needs to accelerate sharply, it starts shifting gears down one at a time instead of dropping two at once. All this is treated by tuning the box, which only one magician from Irkutsk normally does. 
The dullness of the box is annoying in the region of 40 to 60 kilometers slash H, as I read later, this is a delay in switching from 2 to 3 gears. The thing is, GM puts the Europeans on base settings that choke the car, and getting the most out of your 409 is like going there, I don't know where. I don't like the incomprehensible operation of the automatic gearbox. They say that it is adaptive for the driver, but if you don't constantly press the sneaker on the floor, it often gets stupid. This happens mainly after normal driving or standing in a traffic jam, if you want to overtake someone or when rebuilding somewhere from 40 to 60 kilometers slash H, acceleration can be about nothing, smoothly, but without a kick down, but sometimes a kick down still works. There are a lot of branches on the forums where it is discussed how and where it is possible to reflash the electronic brains of the machine so that its operation matches the herd under the hood in the city in conjunction with the motor and gearbox everything is no longer so rosy the box though modern but the settings are so disgusting stupidity just pisses me off sometimes no if you drive the gas to half brake then everything is quite tolerable but on such a car this style of driving is ridiculous and dangerous. And if you drive calmly, then the settings, I repeat once again, are just annoying. Well, if we are talking about a used car, the previous owner of which did not pay enough attention to servicing the box, then a wide variety of problems are possible. For example, those that the author writes about in one of the reviews, misunderstanding with the gearbox, I can't turn it on right away. The engine will run, I will press the pedal several times, and oh, miracle, the gear is switched on. Gets on nuts and brakes. The braking system is just awful. It's just not designed for this car. The brakes overheat instantly, and if you continue to strain them, then the cuffs on the pistons burn out, and the master brake cylinder is pressed through, native brakes are complete bullshit. If you try to stop the car from 70 km slash H four times by pressing the brake pedal to the floor, then on the fifth time it simply will not stop. The brakes float oh oh very quickly, then you have to wait to cool down. The reviewers literally compete in who will speak out about the brake system as ironically as possible, we need to tie him to a rigid hitch behind the Ferrari. Why hard? Because, having dispersed, you will never stop it. On regular brakes, two braking, and then there is no reaction to the brake pedal. Apparently, that is why they put leather interiors in them, they are easy to clean. The brake pedal is sluggish and incomprehensible, you need to press very early. Therefore, all accelerations to hundreds are good in the deserts of Mexico, where there is never anyone. In the car, everything works separately, engine, gearbox, brakes. Especially funny in a traffic jam. The car in front had already left and stopped. At this moment, the Cadillac only reacts to the pressed gas pedal, one, two, three, four, let's go, and quite cheerfully. But it's already necessary not to go, but to slow down. From the side, for sure, it looks especially cool and evokes thoughts about the mental inferiority of the driver. Escalade can make many, but it's a shame to overtake a GL500 from a traffic light and miss your turn, because he refused to brake before the turn. It is clear that not everyone reacts so sharply. Some authors believe that the braking dynamics, although they could be better, are still quite adequate and correspond to the weight of the car, you got behind the wheel of an almost 3-ton car. Do you want him to slow down like a Lamborghini? Yes, it does not slow down instantly, yes, it would be possible to put more brakes, but the price would be different. I think you need to understand that you are driving a tank and that it won't slow down like the Kia Rio. And compared to popular classmates, for example, with the Land Cruiser 200, the Escalade slows down not so badly. Nevertheless, many reviews mention that only a complete replacement of the brake system with Brembo solves the brake problem completely, and this event, as you understand, is not among the budget ones. The factory brakes certainly do the job of stopping this car comfortably and confidently. But, you will immediately buy yourself a Brembo or something similar after the first emergency braking, if you have the amount of $10,000 for a complete set. This is certainly an expensive tuning, but if your budget allows it, it's better to do it right away. By the way, 
I was recommended to remove these brakes for the winter, because due to the special composition of the brake disc, premature wear is possible from dirt that clogs into the holes of the disc and is smeared by the brake pads during braking. I still haven't convinced you to change the brakes. Compare then the size of the Cadillac Escalade and Cadillac SRX. The latter have a much larger diameter. Love number one, dynamic. But the main joy of the Cadillac Escalade owner is the ability of the car to drive very fast. No matter how many people you put in it, no matter how you load the trunk, and with anything, even with cast iron weights, the car still has diesel traction. Escalade swiftly performs any prolonged overtaking and seems ready to accelerate to infinity. At the same time, as the owner's right, you don't feel the speed at all. When you drive 100 km per hour, it feels like you are sawing at 70. In general, the car with its suspension and control features does not provoke an overactive ride, but there is enough traction always and everywhere. And what is the sound of the engine? On each overtaking you hear the most pleasant rumble of the engine. Oh yes, the sound is just super, but the dynamics are quite consistent with the sound. The dynamics, guys, are simply indescribable. You go 120 km slash H, you go out to overtake, you put pressure on the trigger and you get such a kick in the ass that, having done it for the first time, I was already scared. There are, of course, critics who claim that the stock Escalade does not accelerate to 100 in either 6.5 or 6.8 seconds, which are indicated in the brochures, and all these figures are given in order to sell the car. The situation here is deplorable. On cars in 07-08, the firmware allowed driving in the region of 7 seconds to 100, and the firmware of other years squeezed the car even more. 7.5 seconds, this result is not entirely bad, closer to reality 8 to 9 seconds. Let's not argue, maybe that's the way it is. But the fact that, from the point of view of subjective perception, Escalade accelerates like a devil, can be considered an indisputable fact, and the main merit in this belongs to the 6.2 liter engine. No replacement for displacement, nothing will replace the working volume edition, say conservative Americans. I just love gasoline atmospheric V8S and with a large volume, since a 2 liter, dear comrades, is only juice. The author of one of the reviews echoes them. And he has certain reasons for this. There are complaints about the operation of the heater. On the one hand, the owners admit that they never knew what fogging of windows is, and on the other hand, many people still have cold feet. It is proposed to solve this problem very radically, take the wire cutters and bite out the lattice slots on the air duct that leads to the legs. By itself, seat heating works well, providing heat not only to the seat cushion, but also to the lumbar area. Complaints are caused by the placement of the buttons responsible for turning it on. They are located on the driver's left, at the base of the seat back, on the passenger's right, and this seems to many not very convenient. You have to look down to see if the light is on, which means turning on. Plus, the indicator is covered by the seat belt if it is fastened, and the light from it is only visible reflected from the door. On the other hand, the heating switches off automatically, and it is enough to press the button only once, before driving off. But a much larger number of owners are annoyed by the fact that the rest zone of the wiper blades is below the area of backslash U200 B backslash U200 B windshield heated by hot air from the heater, and there is no electric heating of the glass, even in the parking area of backslash U200 B backslash U200 B wipers. As a result, you have to beat the ice off the brushes much more often than in the case of many other models. And the owners also write that the designers didn't think of something with the rear bumper, even a little snow or ice on it, and you can't immediately open or close the back door. Well, complaints are very traditional that the rear suspension begins to rattle in cold weather. 